Hi, I'll continue on where I left off in the last video. And how often does Mozart introduce the quintessence of the trill in his works, in his piano sonatas? That could as well be something to consider. And if you listen to that Rondo alla Turca and do, it is, if, if I, I hear it when I listen to it, then it means it can be heard. So if you listen to it, you can hear it too. And if you think of it not as the four notes, not as Lilliput, but as what you're hearing is the quintessence of the trill. So a trill with a nockschlag being reduced to its pure and concentrated essence, you might hear that what Mozart is presenting. And there's something else about, you know, being on authentic and, and, and a reward of authenticity. But I've said I'm not interested in authenticity because I'm not, because I much prefer to be the only one. I prefer to be not authentic and doing what I'm doing than being authentic. And I like being the only one doing it. But I don't like, I don't like the wrong version being considered the right version. And I don't like, you know, let's say when you think of defending what I'm doing here, you know, if you think of my version of Rondo alla Turca, and if you think of me defending that, I will be able to present the end of paragraph eight and paragraph 18 the quintessence of the trill as argument to defend my interpretation along with the fact that the notes are short that they are detached that they're not legato along with the fact that the tempo does not allow for a long appoggiatura and it's absolute but lily put is like I said before, when you're in the cage, you're, nothing you do is of consequence. So you don't know anything about the abzug. You don't know anything about, you know, what an appoggiatura actually is. So you think you, just by playing four notes, you're playing automatically playing an appoggiatura. When you think of, as all that I can present to defend my interpretation, and Lilliput, the role of honor, they think they're the authorities, they think they're the ones who are right. What, when they are actually presented, when confronted by me, what can they offer in defense of their interpretation? They won't do anything. They, they won't have anything to defend their interpretation because they never even knew they had to. And you know what they'll do in their greatness? Instead of saying, the truth, they'll say, well, your version is right too. They'll try and pass it off as that, as my version being correct too. Nobody said your version was incorrect. But the onus on them is to say, not, not to give me, you know, permission to have my interpretation, the onus is on them to say that their interpretation is 100% incorrect. That their interpretation is the incorrect one. They have no business considering their interpretation of Rondo, of those figures as being in any way correct. So, this is how Mozart, or how I upload it is how Mozart will have played it. And, and, and what's the advantage like to be gained from, you know, what's the reward for being authentic? 
and and you can take me out of the equation here and just think of it in you know just in purely like a hypothetical term when one plays a piece and, and, and does everything correctly and makes all the correct decisions a, a piece by Mozart what invariably ends up happening is that person is not what they're hearing come out of the piano when they do everything correctly as it's meant to be done what they hear coming out of the piano is not themselves but Mozart it's not them playing the, the piece anymore it's Mozart playing the piece because that person is not doing anything that out of personal preference or prejudice they are only doing what's correct and, and when you do everything correctly you then hear Mozart so what you are hearing with my version of Rondo a la Turca is how Mozart will have actually played Rondo a la Turca. And what you're hearing from the role of honor is how mediocrity attacks genius. And when you consider that you're not hearing four notes, but four notes of one ornament on one note, You can see how much the role of honor drags it down. And another term I was considering in, in, in finding a name for that, what Bach has identified, the pure and concentrated essence of the trill. Another term I was thinking of was the ping of the trill. And because Mozart knew about the quintessence of the trill and Beethoven knew about the quintessence of the trill. And in the Appassionata, in those trills that, you know, jump an octave, what Beethoven did there was he he kind of drew out the quintessence of the trill in the way he, 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 he um, showcased the trill rising those octaves. So what you have on that last trill is you hear the quintessence of the trill. It's not reduced to its quintessence, it's within the trill. And, and that can be heard on, on my upload. And, and it's, it's almost like it appears as an apparition, as a ghost. It's, it's just there in an effect. And it would that be that effect, the way he's able to, Beethoven was able to draw it out of the trill. So it becomes, and he, he makes it become a ping. It's like a, a ping. And you won't be actually able to hear it, but if you listen carefully, it is like a, like an apparition there it's it's in the air the and 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 so the uh, beethoven's the way beethoven was able to draw out that made me consider calling it the ping of the trill but the ping of the trill is not doesn't sound so it's not so usable in terms of you know academic or whatever if you're writing it down or you know making a a, a study out of it or something so I, f I figured the quintessence of the trill is, is more usable. But I can see from that, from what... And if you, if you want to argue with me, if you want to say, no, that wasn't what Beethoven was doing with those trills. He wasn't drawing out the, the, the quintessence of the trill to such a fine point that it becomes the ping of the trill. He wasn't... Beethoven was oblivious to those, to the quintessence of the trill. If you want to say that to me, well then tell me what was it Beethoven was doing with those trills. And that's probably the cue for that person to sit down and shut up. <laughs> because what do they have? 
What, what answer do they have? And you might as well say that, you know, you're calling it the quintessence of the trill, but Bach didn't, you know, Bach provide, like, how are we meant, to, why should we even believe you that it, it, the, it's even the secret of, it's even the secret to achieving a clear and crisp Nachschlag? Bach does not say it. Well, first of all, the evidence I would present for, the, for Bach knowing about the quintessence of the trill is that he was able to actually present in notation exactly that quintessence of the trill. And if he didn't know it existed, he couldn't have, he couldn't have presented it. And the other thing I'd say is why does Bach not say, with this sentence, I'm presenting the secret to achieving a clear and crisp Nachschlag. With this sentence, I'm identifying the quintessence of the trill. Why does Bach not do that? I would say Bach didn't do it because Bach is not spoon feeding. If you think about what Bach has done, this book here, what this is, What is to be gained from this book? This book tells you how to be a Bach. That is what is in this book. This is what, that is what Beethoven got from this book. Beethoven learned how to be a Bach, what it means to be a Bach. Everything one knows that would qualify someone as a Bach is in this book. And if you think in terms of, you know, clubs and, 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 and exclusive clubs, and if you think of that sports hall, what you have is the roll of honor on one side and Bach and Mozart and Beethoven on the other side, and none of them agree because you can base it on Rondo Alla Turca. The entire roll of honor are here. and Beethoven, Mozart, and Bach are here, none of them would ever consider playing Ronda Walla Turka the way the Roll of Honor play it. That separates them. This is the exclusive club. The Roll of Honor is the common as muck club. And if you think this is what, this is the accumulated insight and wisdom of, of, of I don't know how many generations of box. This is hard. This information, it was not easy to come by. This insight, this wisdom was not easy to come by. And, and, and I could feel by Bach that it's almost a, a sort of betrayal that their family, their generations had to go tr so true much to um, achieve this insight into music. And then what, 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 what does Bach do? He takes it all and he says to everybody else here, it's yours, you can have it too. Wouldn't he want some sort of a, like a, like a standard that one has to possess. Is he gonna to wanna to give this to the lowest common denominator or is he, does he want this available to people who sh display certain qualities? Those people who actually want to know, who, who want to discover the secret and not just people who'll take it and, you know, consume it and then say, what's next? With his conscience, he's doing something incredibly generous is he gonna be able to, is it gonna sit well in his conscience to think he'd be giving it away like, like it's, it's, it's of little value? When in reality, this provides access to the exclusive club, to the elite club. No, he's not gonna wanna do it. He's going to want 
to it, it to be available to people who deserve who 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 appreciate who can value access and not to those who will just you know treat it like everything else that they get their hands on that they have no appreciation for anything and so how do you do that how do you keep these people out and 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 let the good ones in you 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 leave out the the spoon feeding because once these people are not spoon fed they're they 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 are you know they're stuck they they have no hope they can only be spoon fed so he's not going to spoon feed that he's not going to tell you and then you might think i'm betraying it because i'm doing the spoon feeding but i'm not really because this has gotten so bad that that if you are listening to these and 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 considering it and and thinking about it you uh, that that already is the quality that could get you here so that would so so Bach not explicitly saying this is the quintessence of the trill for me does not prove that he does not know of its existence because the quintessence of the trill is something that actually exists in the world of music and it is actually something that Lilliput and those in the cage they will never encounter they will never know of its existence because it doesn't exist for them it doesn't exist in their world of cage activity in their worlds of notes without consequences with the with connecting the end of paragraph 8 with paragraph 18, 18 you are getting undeniable and an explicit instruction on how to perform that bar. You are getting undeniable evidence that that bar in figure 29 is not to be played as eight equal 16th notes but as the quintessence of the trill or the, 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 the highest tone of the trill being hastened, i.e. being a short, unchangeable appoggiatura, i.e. being a crushed note, and those other two notes, each of which represent the knockschlag to the two versions of the trill, two versions which Mozart was fond of. So what you're hearing is the question of how Rondo a la Turca is meant to be played being solved. And the one version is wrong and the other version is right. You can see what a sorry state classical music is in because these are all experts, these are considered, all of these are considered geniuses. And, and they think in their midst, they have their, they think Mozart is in their midst. They have this, you know, golden calf or false idol that they're worshiping of Mozart. They think Mo Bach is in their midst. They're in that sports hall looking at their false idols, worshipping them. Whereas the real Bach and Mozart are here on their own, separated, because they do not fall into the same category based on how Rondo a la Turca is actually meant to be played, the correct way of playing Rondo a la Turca.
they are not four notes. They are four notes of one ornament on one note. And that, in the second section, they, they, they're the voices of the two characters, one saying something and the other responding. They are real singing voices, not, you know, like what Bach says as an abgerichtete fogel, like a, a trained songbird twit, tweeting away. That is not what they are. They are the voices, singing voices. And, 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 and one of those notes, the first note of that tune that is sung, when you can think in terms of singing, that is decorated with an ornament. And that ornament with which Mozart has decorated is the quintessence of the trill. So it could be exciting to maybe listen to um, to my version of Rondo alla Turca and, and listen for that and, and think of those four notes as being one ornament on one note. And when you hear that actually in effect, because it does, there are, you know, many of those that I perform are absolutely and utterly perfect. There is not a single thing. And the piano, you have to listen past the piano. The piano, there's something that Bockel, when he's talking about the, he, he'll go on to talk about Lilliput now in future paragraphs. He'll explain some of what I would see is relevant to understanding what's happening with people. But if you listen past the qualities of the piano and, and to what I am doing, you have a chance. Since I've managed to play those perfectly, you have a chance of hearing Mozart and hearing the quintessence of the trill and hearing it as an ornament and hearing the actual tune, the actual melody, the singing line of that section, hearing the characters, there's two characters there in that bit coming through, you have a chance of hearing them. That might be kind of exciting to do that. And I would say uh, if, if you're interested or a good way to kind of get past the, the, the piano itself, the quality of the piano itself is to if you're listening to any of my pieces to pick a voice to follow, you know, that could be in the bass line, you know, just ignore the rest and concentrate on one voice that I play. Cause if you do that, you will see that, that I'm playing voices and you'll see how all the voices are all shaped. And when you see that, when you, pick out a voice to concentrate on. And then you, you know, you start to hear more or, or if you then stop, listen to it again and, and, and don't concentrate on that voice, you will know that that voice is present. And you will start to hear the music as, a, as opposed to the noise of the piano. So that could be a way to get past it. And so if you can hear past the noise the piano makes and, and, and listen to the music and to, to what's the shape of the, the character of those notes and, and, and the effect, the, the way, the, the connection of those notes and the connection of the phrase, you have a chance of actually hearing Mozart perform the quintessence of the trill. But the most important thing is humility. <laughs> it's not, it's not ego. It's not arrogance that 
has me say that it's, it is what it is. That has me saying it and, you know, I'm gonna, I am sharing this with you. When I disparage Lilliput and all, I am doing it as somebody, when I, when I talk about the cage and how, how awful the cage is, I am doing it as somebody who has provided you with the means of escaping. With those things I've shared on those videos in the how to play the piano playlist, they actually are the key to escaping the cage. So I, I, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it as somebody who has provided the solution. I am providing solutions here. I have solved the issue of unevenness. Nobody, you know, you won't find Lily put the role of honor ever identifying what causes unevenness. I have actually identified the cause of unevenness. And once you know the cause of something, you can eradicate it forever. And so if you take that seriously, what I'm saying, pay attention to it, try it for yourself, because all those things, those elements of virtuosity, they're all connected and they all are connected with the finger position, with AC fingering. It's the solution to becoming a virtuoso. You will escape the cage. You can start to, you know, those examples, they'd be impossible to play if you're not in the world of music. There's too little there. You ask a, ask a professor to play any of those examples. They won't be able to do it because they don't have this, there's, there's, there's no spoon feeding for them. There's no dynamic markings. There's no articulation markings. There's no crescendo signs. They won't know what to do with it because they only deal in notes and they only know what's on their shopping list. They only know They can only do what they're told to do once they get notes. All they have themselves is notes. So once they get presented notes, it, that's all it is for them. They're just notes. So they, they'll play the notes. They won't have a clue how to play them. You will be able to do it when you escape the cage. And what Bach, and, and so you will be able to try for yourselves what Bach is saying. And you will be in a position where you can agree or disagree. You will be able to do that. If you're dealing in notes, you'll never be able to do that. And, 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 and so when I, when I go after Lilliput and the role of honor, I'm doing it having, providing you with the solution. I'm not just giving out about them and, and, and offering nothing. I am giving you the solution. So uh, I would be very appreciative that when I talk about Lilliput, because how can I not talk about Lilliput when, when Bach talks about Lilliput? He's going to go on talking about mistakes that Lilliput make that are as common as they are ugly. How can I not talk about Lilliput when, when, when Bach is talking about Lilliput? So there it is, it's I, been identified now, rediscovered, the quintessence of the trill. And when you escape the cage and start moving in the world of music, you are gonna start to recognize the quintessence of the trill. And none of Lilliput, none of the role of honor were able to reduce the trill to its quintessence. Because they didn't know there was such a thing as the quintessence of the trill. But Bach, Mozart and Beethoven were able to reduce the trill to its quintessence because they knew of its existence. And I am telling you so Leave the role of honor, leave the, those Lilliput professors, leave those who worship the metronome, leave them in the cage. But you can escape, you can get away from them.
and then you can know of the quintessence of the trill and then you can perform Rondo a la Turca, capturing, presenting the quintessence of the trill and, and, and an ornamentation that, that goes with all the other ornamentation in that piece. And then that coda at the end, that's, um, you know, that's the chorus and that's the orchestra, the end of the opera. And if you think at the very end, what Bach said about the short notes following the dot being always played shorter than the notation requires. I do that there at the end of Rondo a la Turca and you will hear, you will know that that, there is no possible way that Mozart could not have played it like that. Mozart was a virtuoso. Mozart was a master musician. He did not, he was not mediocrity. Playing it the way the Roll of Honor play it, playing those dotted notes exactly as they're written on the page, that's a sign of their functioning illiteracy. That is a sign of their inability to read the score. That is not, you will know Mozart did not play like that because you will hear the effect it has and how it makes sense. There's no way you're gonna impress people with mediocrity's version of it. Not in, in, in reality, not in the real world, only the ones that are brainwashed into, you know, you learn to recognize it as that. It's like toothpaste is recognized as being mint flavored. Chocolate flavored toothpaste might be as effective as mint flavored toothpaste because it's not the flavor that, you know, cleans the teeth. Nobody will accept chocolate flavored toothpaste because they've learned to recognize it with its mint taste. They have learned to recognize Ronda Alaturka as mediocrity as w with the stamp that mediocrity has placed after it has successfully eradicated genius. The joints are gone from classical music. Lilliput has taken over. There are no joints left. The joints, joints have to rise again and reclaim that music that they've usurped. So in order to keep the length of the video under control, I'll end it here and I'll continue on from where I left off in the next video. Thanks. Bye.